Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my November TBR. Oh, can you tell that I'm going to a Halloween party later today? <laughs> but I figured I might as well take advantage of the fact that I'm ready and I will get this video filmed because I have been putting it off. So yeah, today we're gonna be talking about all of the books that I'm hoping to read in November. This list is very modest. I'm not putting a ton on my TBR just because for one thing, October, wasn't a great reading month for me. I think I put like 20 books on my TBR and as of now I've read like five, eight if you count the like freelance books that I edit. Yeah, October just didn't end up being super awesome. I've been kind of in a reading slump. And then in November I have a ton of stuff going on in my real life in addition to doing NaNoWriMo and then also possibly still being in this reading slump. So I'm trying not to overwhelm myself and I've only put a couple of books on this list and books that I know without a doubt I will get to no matter the circumstances, which means I think we have five today to talk about. I'll have them all linked down below in the description if you'd like to go check them out. I haven't finished doing my hair or put the rest of my outfit on, but can any of you guess what I'm being tonight? So yeah, let's just jump straight into my TBR. The first book that I have on my TBR was on my TBR for October. It's actually the only one that I'm carrying over. I still wanna to get to all the other ones that were on my TBR that I didn't end up reading last month, but this is the one that I think is my highest priority. That is Before the Devil Breaks You by Libba Bray. This is the third book in the Diviner series. I read Layer of Dreams in September and The Diviners last year. The fourth and final book in the series is coming out in February, I believe. So I really want to finish this third book before that book comes out. And these books are gigantic and they take a really long time. So even if I start it in November, I might not finish it until like December or January. And I've really been enjoying this series. So I definitely want to get to this one this month. Just because October's over does not mean we're done with the spooky books. I actually don't really know what this one specifically is about. The Diviners is a paranormal mystery set in the 1920s. We're following Evie O'Neill who is living with her uncle in New York City and Evie is a diviner so she has this sort of psychic power when she touches objects that belong to someone she can see like their memories or their secrets. And so the first book The Diviners is all about her trying to figure out the identity of a serial killer going through New York with her powers. And then the second book is about this epidemic of a sleeping sickness where people are falling asleep, getting trapped in their dreams, and then never waking up. And some of the diviners can like dream walk and that's how they're going about like trying to figure out what's really going on. And so um I don't really know what the third book specifically is about. I mean, obviously it's going to be a continuation of what happened in the second book, but the first book and the second book had very specific plots separate from each other in addition to like carrying on with previous storylines. So I'm interested to see where this third book goes. But yeah, I love this series. It's super atmospheric and creepy and spooky, but also just really smart and it comments on actual issues that happened in history, like the Chinese Exclusion Act and things like that. It talks about eugenics, like it's very relevant in addition to being really fun. We have so many main characters that we're following, especially in the second book, and there's such a diverse cast of characters and they're all equally interesting. I just love this series. I've been talking about it a lot lately, so I'm not gonna go on and on about it in this video. But if you haven't started this series yet, I would highly recommend it and I would definitely recommend the audiobooks. The second book on my TBR I'm so excited about, guys. <laughs> I've been talking about doing this for months and I finally decided that November is the time. We're going to be rereading Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead. I'm thinking about possibly hosting like a read along or something for this in like the second half of November. So if you also have any desire to reread this first book, do it with me this month. Or if you haven't read the series yet, now would be a good time to start. Because this TBR is so short also, there's a high chance I'm gonna end up rereading like this entire series this month. But yeah, let me know if that's something you would be interested in. Maybe we could do like a live show. I don't really know. I don't have any formal plans for this, obviously. I'm trying not to put anything else on my plate because I'm already struggling to keep up with all the things that I have to do. But I think that's something that would be fun. I haven't read this series in years and I love it and I really am in the mood to reread it. Vampire Academy is basically just this boarding school for vampires and in this world there are three different kinds of vampires. We have the Maroi who have like these special magical powers, the Dampiers who are half human and they're sort of their bodyguards, and then the Strigoi which are the more like animalistic, primal, vicious vampires that just like kill everything. And our main character, Rose, Hathaway is the bodyguard of her best friend Lissa who is royalty and has to be protected because she's like the last person in her line and this series I don't even want to call it a guilty pleasure because I don't feel guilty about it but it is very trashy and fun and fast to read and fabulous. The next book on my TBR is a little more vague because I haven't exactly decided which book I want to read but I know I want to read a poetry book so that's book three a poetry book. My NaNoWriMo project this year actually is I'm going to be working on my second poetry collection. I've already started it, but I really want to take November to get 
some really good work done for that. If you didn't know, I already have a poetry collection out. It came out in the summer of 2018. It's called The Sweetest Kind of Poison. I'll have the links down below if you're interested in it. But my NaNoWriMo project is a follow-up to this. It's not like related to this book, but it's a second collection. And so that just means I've been in a huge poetry mood lately. And so I really want to pick up a new poetry book. And so what I'm thinking I'm going to do is the author of Please Don't Go Before I Get Better, Madison Kuhn, just released her new book. Uh, I think it's called Almost Home. And I'm thinking about picking that one up. I think she's actually my age. She's from like the area that I went to college in and stuff. So, and I liked this first book. So I think that would be a good thing to pick up. And it's the only like recent poetry release that I can think of that I was like even remotely excited about. So if you have any recommendations for poetry books that you've read and loved lately, feel free to leave those in the comments down below, but I think I'm going to read her new book. And then of course this had to be on my November TBR is Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. I actually don't know the exact release date. I know this is coming out in November. I feel like it's like towards the end of November. But this is the third book in the Cruel Prince series and I read the first two books earlier this year. Loved them. Super excited for the last book. Cautiously so because I didn't like the sequel as much as I liked the first one. So we'll see where she takes it from here. I'm assuming you all already know what the Cruel Prince is about. But just in case you don't, our main character Jude was kidnapped by a fairy and taken to the fairy world to grow up with her two siblings and the fairy that kidnapped them killed their parents. And so now she's grown up in fairy and basically all of the other fairies hate her because she's mortal and she's been bullied her entire life and one of those horrible fairies is the cruel prince. Um, this series I think is most well known for its hate to love romance. If you can even call it that, I think it's just like enemies to enemies romance. Like they're, that never really changes. But yeah, this is really fun. This series is definitely one of my favorites of Holly Black's. Her books tend to be like a hit or miss with me, but this one was definitely a hit. I think this is a trilogy. I think this is the last book in the series. So I'm very, very excited to see how this wraps up. The last book that I read of Holly Black's was The Darkest Part in the Forest, which is actually set in the same world as The Cruel Prince, but I was really disappointed by that one. So I'm really hoping this one doesn't let me down. And then the last book that I have on my TBR is called To Hell with the Hustle. This one I actually just heard about a couple of days ago. Thought it sounded like a nice change of pace. This is back to like the nonfiction personal development books, which I was super into over the summer, but I haven't read one in a long time. And I saw that it was on Scribd. The audiobook was on Scribd. So I was like, what the heck, why not? And it's only a four hour long audiobook too. So I can blow through this in a day. And it sounds like it's going to be something I need to hear as someone who's kind of a workaholic and is constantly being productive and constantly doing things and definitely needs to learn how to slow down. Its description makes it sound really good. It says our culture makes constant demands of us do more, accomplish more, buy more, post more, be more. And following these demands, we have indeed become more more anxious, more tired, more hurt, more depressed, more frantic. What we are doing isn't working. In a society where hustle is the expectation, busyness is the norm, and information is king, we have forgotten the fundamentals that make us human, anchor our lives, and provide meaning. It also says this is your wake-up call to resist the hustle culture and embrace the slowness of Jesus. So I'm not sure exactly how religious this book is going to be. At first I thought maybe not for me. I'm just not super into religion and stuff, but I do like spirituality stuff. And I have read several like personal development books that do have that like religious tilt to them, but I found enough like other substance in them that I still enjoy them. So I'll let you guys know how this one goes. I might end up like starting it, realizing this is not for me and setting it down. The idea behind it beyond the whole like religious tilt sounds right up my alley. So I want to give it a try, see what I think. Not that I think like religion is a bad thing or anything like that. It's just not like the kind of books that I like to read. But yeah, those are the five books that I'm definitely intending to get to in November. I have a million other ones that are kind of like on JV. They might get pushed up to varsity this month. We don't know yet. We'll see if I can get out of this slump and how quickly I get through the first five on my TBR. But yeah, I would love it if you guys would comment down below what books you are most excited to read in November. Or if you've read any of the books that I talked about today, feel free to let me know what you thought of them down below in the comments. I'm always interested to hear your opinions. This TBR video is a lot shorter than they usually are, but a lot more realistic than the last few have been. I had one really good reading month this year. In August, I read 12 books. And so then every month after that, I was just like, oh, I could put like 12 books in my TBR. I'll totally get Get to them. And then I read like five. <laughs> I'm just setting myself up for failure. But yeah, if you're new here, I would love it if you would subscribe. I put up at least two new videos every single week and I would love to have you stick around. If you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up because it helps out my channel a lot. And all of my links are down below in the description if you feel so inclined to look down there, like links to my book, The Sweetest Kind of Poison, links to Instagram, freelance services, second YouTube channel, everything you could want and stuff you probably don't want. I've had a lot of caffeine today you couldn't tell. But yeah, I think that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will just see you in my next one very, very soon.
So hit me. So hit me. So hit me. First a confession. With you, I feel a connection. With